Dear Wendy, well, what a year it's been. It's simply wonderful to finally be able to take the time and make contact with all the people close to us to tell them what's been happening in our lives. It seems we never have enough time to communicate with all our friends and loved ones, but I guess that just has a lot to do with the busy and complicated lives we all lead. Goodness knows there's never a dull moment in this family. There's always so much going on. What with our vacation to Utah and our brand new recreational vehicle, dad and dear planning a visit here, work and career, trying to keep pace with the fast-paced lives we all lead. Oh, but I get real satisfaction from running a home, making sure everything goes smoothly and is right up to standard. Stickler for detail that I am, it's amazing that I can find any time for myself. But I make those little moments in the course of the day. I just say to the family, hey now guys, this is my time. Otherwise, what good could I possibly be to them? Bob sends you his best. Bob and his bowling. Sometimes I think bowling's the only thing that man cares anything about. And then there's our little team. Now that boy's something. We're very proud and pleased to report that our Timmy has decided on a career in communications. Are you aware that if you dip bananas in lemon juice right after they're peeled, they will not turn dark? And two, the faint flavor of lemon really adds a lot. Did you ever think of waxing your ashtrays? Ashes won't cling, odors won't linger, and they can be wiped clean with a paper towel, saving you that daily washing time. This information and a whole lot more will be in my new book. It's called One Day at a Time in the Home. I want to take this opportunity to thank one and all for your wonderful cards and letters following Bob's accident. That darn tree trunk coffee table he was trying to build. While one minute Bob was just working away, trying to make a perfectly nice coffee table, in the next minute, his life and mine were changed forever. You know, a relationship is a funny thing. The whole reality of it can change in the blink of an eye. And how we cope in a time of crisis really tells us what we're about as human beings. Bob lost control of that chainsaw, and he was really hit where he lived. As for me, I thought I'd never get over it. How horrible those first moments were when I first came running out of the kitchen and saw Bob lying there on the ground. When I saw the blood, which was removed, by the way, by pre-soaking his shirt in warm water for 30 minutes, followed by applying a paste made of meat tenderizer and warm water and waiting 15 minutes, then rinsing. It works like a charm. Our marriage hasn't changed, though. Bob's the same guy he always was. All I know is that he can't wait to get back to his bowling team. You let an active guy linger idle too long and who knows how he'll react. I want to say that getting through the day, knowing what's happened in our lives, can seem a trial from time to time. My time in the kitchen is my therapy. I'm busy as always with my canning and bottling. Marge's own homemade crunchy gherkins are as popular as ever with our friends, relatives, and neighbors. Speaking of neighbors, I just don't know what we would do without the support of our neighbors to help us through these difficult times. There's Carl, for instance, Bob's best buddy at the gravel plant, and a friend, no, a pillar of support to me, as far back as I can remember. The world is not a dream carved in stone. It is made of dubious stuff subject to rot. edible material is as equivocal as Dolly's fleshy watches. It seems inert, inorganic, but hidden larvae may have changed it into a cadaver. The housewife who loses herself in these things becomes dependent, like the things upon the whole world. Linen is scorched, the roast burns, chinaware gets broken. These are absolute disasters, for when things are destroyed, they are gone forever. Permanence and security 
cannot possibly be obtained through them. The pillage and bombs of war threaten one's wardrobes, one's house. Few tasks are more like the torture of syphysis than housework, with its endless repetition. The clean becomes soiled, the soiled is made clean, over and over, day after day. The housewife wears herself out, marking time. She makes nothing, simply perpetuates the present. She never senses conquest of a positive good, but rather indefinite struggle against negative evil. Now about those gherkins, I'll let you in on a big secret. Lime. Two cups of lime to two gallons of water. Soak those pickles for 24 hours in lime water, then rinse in ice water for three hours. May I give you my recipe for a special occasion meal that's delicious, elegant, and simple? It's called Steak Diane. Take four boneless sirloin steaks, six ounces each, third of an inch thick, one quarter cup of butter, one half a cup of dry vermouth, one quarter cup of minced chives, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, one quarter cup of brandy, minced parsley. Heat the butter in a chafing dish or an electric skillet at the table. That's to make sure you have your customers cornered. Brown the steaks quickly on both sides, about three to five minutes a side. Add vermouth, chives, Worcestershire, salt, and pepper. Cook about one minute more. Add brandy and set a flame. When the flames go out, sprinkle with parsley and serve immediately. Spooning sauce over each steak serves four. At one point in my day a few weeks ago, I realized how little attention I had paid to the environment that week. That is why I always empty every aerosol can thoroughly before disposing of it. It's not just the stuff about the ozone layer. I mean, if we don't save the environment, the environment sure isn't going to save us. But it is a sad fate to be required without respite to repel an enemy instead of working towards positive ends. And very often the housekeeper submits to it in a kind of madness that may verge on perversion, a kind of sadomasochism. The maniac housekeeper wages her furious war against dirt, blaming life itself for the rubbish all living growth entails. When any living being enters her house, her eye gleams with a wicked light. Wipe your feet. Don't tear the place apart. Leave that alone. She wishes those of her household would hardly breathe. Everything means more thankless work for her. Washing, ironing, sweeping, ferreting out rolls of lint from under her wardrobes. All this halting of decay is also the denial of life, for time simultaneously creates and destroys, and only its negative aspects concern the housekeeper. Her occupation makes her dependent upon husband and child. She is justified through them, but in their lives she is only an inessential intermediary. That obedience is legally no longer one of her duties and no way changes her situation. For this depends not on the will of the couple, but on the very structure of the conjugal group. Woman is not allowed to do something positive in her work and in consequence win recognition as a complete person. However respected she may be, she is subordinate, secondary, parasitic. Severe, preoccupied, always on the watch, she loses joie de vivre. She becomes overprudent and avaricious. She becomes bitter and disagreeable and hostile to all that lives. The end is sometimes murder. <laughs> it seems we have everything we want or need. Yet, we live in a world of longing. Longing for our friends, our family our loved ones, even though they're simply right next door. Well, that's all for now. Take care of yourself. Take care of those you love. That's the best advice I can give you. Love, Marge.